All right, so here's the question that you asked about, 8.235. So we're talking about statistics here, not statistics, hypothesis testing. Historically, percentage of residents in certain countries support stricter gun control laws that have been 54%. Recent poll, 1,026. People show 508 in stricter gun control laws. So the poll, blah, 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 0.05. Okay. So we're talking about establishing your hypothesis testing. So P is going to be equal to should be 0.54. That's your popular population proportion. And that should be what go right here to 0.54 that comes from the 54%. And then it says assume poll is given a random sample test to claim that the proportion of those favoring strict gun control has changed. So we're not talking about being greater than, not talking about being less than, we're talking about just being different. It said it has changed, so it should be not equal to. So, yep, there we go right there. Now it says significance level 0 0.05, conditions, expected number, about 50, which is more than the IQ. About, so we're going to take, okay, let me go to notes. All right, so we have P naught is 54%, which is 0.54. N is 1,026, let me see, yeah, 1,026 people uh, was it part of the poll. X is 508, it says 508 showed in favor of strict gun control laws. So it means P hat is gonna be 508 over the 1,026. So zero four nine five one three. All right, so what else we have to do? So we have to do n times one minus p naught. So that's one of our initial conditions. If that is greater than or equal to 10, then we're good to go. Sorry about that, head to sneeze. Not to the nearest whole number. So let me go back to it. So notice it says n times p naught is 554. That needs to be more than 10 as well. But then it asks us about n times 1 minus 0.54, which is p naught. And that's what we just did on the um, notes. They gave us 472. It says round to the nearest whole number. And it has to be more than 10. Both of those have to be more than 10. All right. So p hat, how many decimal places? Four decimal places, so four nine five one. All right. Then they tell us to find well, what are they doing this in steps? So they're giving us the ability to find the standard error. So P not one minus P not should be 0.46. Okay. And now we just throw that in the calculator, 
times 0.46 divided by 1026, and take the square root of that. I might have messed up real quick. I think I hit I mean, decimal places one, five, five. All right, we're good to go. So all we did was just put that in the calculator. 0.54 times 0.46 divided by 1026, then took the square root of that, gave us this value right here. Then we already know what P hat and uh, P naught are. So that was 0.4951. And then here, 0.54. And now if I do that work to find the z-score, so 0.4951 minus 0.54, hold on, 0.4951 minus four, and divide by 0 0.0156. And then round the two decimal places, I have negative two, why is not working? Negative two point eight eight. Okay. Then get the p-value. So we go to our chart, our z-score chart. And remember the value, the z-score that we have is negative 2.88. So negative 2.8 is right here. Eight is right here. That's 0 0.0020. All right, so let's go back to the uh, notes. So we have our test statistic, negative 2.88. Go to the chart, 0 0.0020. All right, so now, because, oh, if it's not up here, it's on the other thing. So we have our hypothesis testing. So that's what we set up. Now, not equal to, means that our test is going to be two-tailed. So that means when I look at my a diagram of my chart, it's going to look like this. And we're looking at negative 2.88, but then positive 2.88 here. That comes from the z-score. Now, we just saw that over here is 0 0.0020. But if that's the case over here, then it's also the case right here. And so that means whenever it's two-tailed, uh, two. and you want to find the p-value, you have to take that chart value and multiply it times two. So that should be our p-value. Yep. All right. And they only wanted three decimal places, so 0 0.004. So now we're going to, let's go here. So now they want us to come up with a conclusion that comes from our hypothesis steps chart that I gave you. All right, so right here, it says that your p-value is less than alpha, that's your significance level, then you reject the null hypothesis. So our significance level alpha is right here, 0 0.05. So we're comparing these two. 
and we see p value is less than alpha. So that means we will reject the null hypothesis. And oh, I guess I'll go back to it. So you reject the null hypothesis, the percentage is significantly different from 54%. All right. So you know, our null hypothesis stated this, and our alternative is this one. So it's always based on rejecting the null hypothesis or not rejecting the null hypothesis. All right, let me know if you have any questions.